Hi, this is Mike from Microsoft Oxen Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we're going to be doing a BIOS flash on our ASUS Prime B550 motherboard. I've just got it picked up really cheap off Amazon, and it was a warehouse deal, and it does appear that the, uh, the board is very, very old. The BIOS actually dates back to somewhere in 2020. Obviously, the time you're watching this, I'm not sure when it's going to be, but this video is going to be released somewhere August 2022, so the motherboard BIOS is at least two years old. Is missing a few features, things like resizable bar, etc. So obviously it makes sense to do it. And also it's one of those motherboards that doesn't have a USB flashback, so you do have to do it through the system as it's working. So if you're watching this, maybe you're thinking about updating your BIOS, before you swap out your processor, update the BIOS. That is very important. Now this board potentially may end up having a 5700G or 5600G, something along those lines. So at the moment, I've got my Ryzen 9 3900X in there, which it works straight off the bat, no problems at all, and it's fired up, and I want to test it and make sure it's all working. But also, I want to take you lot through how to do the BIOS update. And obviously, like I said, I can't stress enough, make sure you do this before you do any processor swaps. Or if you buy this board, if you're buying a 5000 series process with it, try and speak to the retailer and say, is it 5000 series ready? That's going to be really important going forward. Anyway. That's enough waffling, let's get on with this. So uh, one of the other reasons I'm actually updating the BIOS, other than I want to use a new processor, is I've done some benchmarks, so I've run some Cinebench tests, uh, which you've probably seen for some B-roll I filmed a little bit earlier. It's performing okay. It's not doing great. Um, it's kind of a little bit below what I was expecting, about 400 points off, which sometimes can be run-to-run -run variances. I've done a couple of runs now, and on the screen you can see we've got something in the region about 18,300 and change. So ideally we want to be getting that up to somewhere around 18.7, 18.8, even higher if we can. Uh, potentially it's down to the BIOS revision, it's not really squeezing all the performance it can out of the system, all those kinds of usual things. So with that said, let's get on with this. So things you're going to need, obviously the working system, connection to the internet, you can see I've got a LAN cable connected, and also you're going to need a USB stick to actually store the BIOS on. Anything that's on the here will be erased, or potentially should be erased, because we need to format it to FAT32, etc, etc. So yeah, that is pretty much it. There will be links in the video description, so for USB sticks that I recommend, and also for the actual site to get the BIOS, it's pretty easy, just the Asus website, but I'll link it all below just to make life a little bit easier for you. So let's get on and do it. So we've got our USB drive installed, so let's go to that. I think that's got, yep, yeah, that's my previous BIOS, so we can delete that, remove that off of there, and what we will do is we'll actually format the drive just to be on the safe side. So make sure it's FAT32, uh, default allocation size, no drive label, that's not necessary. This actually is a 32 gigabyte drive, which is the kind of maximum really for FAT32. So I click on start, it'll say it's going to erase all of the data, so we'll go ahead and do that. Format complete, happy days, nice and quickly done. So now we can go into Google and we'll click on the link, which I've saved here as a bookmark. Again, links will be in the video description. So make sure it's the right board, so this is the Prime B550 Plus. There is actually a Wi-Fi version of this and various micro ATX versions as well, so just make sure you get the right BIOS for your particular board. They aren't all the same, so that is very important. Head over to the Driver and Utility tab and look at BIOS and firmware and it'll show you the latest version. Now just for reference, uh, if I do show all, I'm actually on the version which is down here, I think it's 0603, which is yeah from uh, yeah the 11th of June 2020. So yeah, it's over two years old. So there's been tons and tons and tons of updates available. So uh, it's, it's definitely worthwhile doing that. So we're gonna go ahead now, this is the latest version. So as the day of recording, the latest one is 2803. So we're gonna go ahead, click on download, and that'll download to your downloads location. You can click on the up arrow and show in folder. So here's our downloads. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna right click I'm going to choose Extract All because it is a compressed file. So we're going to extract that one, and then that's going to show us our file. So we don't need to do the BIOS renamer because that is for USB flashback. ASUS include that on pretty much all BIOSes. We don't need that at all. No need to rename the file or anything. So what we'll do is we're going to right click on the BIOS file. We're going to choose either Cut or Copy. Entirely up to you. Let's try Copy. And then we're going to go over to our USB drive. We're going to right click in here. We're going to choose Paste. And there we go, there is our cap file. So that is the BIOS file. So now what we need to do is to shut down the PC and access the BIOS. In order to do that on this board, we're just gonna reset the computer or turn it off. Just do restart and we're gonna smash the delete key. 
when it's restarting. Okay, so we've hit the BIOS uh, button, or the delete key rather, um, gone into the BIOS, so as you can see, our BIOS version, yeah, like I said, 0603. Yeah, that's not great. And obviously there's lots of things missing from the top here, such as a resizable bar and all that kind of stuff. So it's definitely worth updating our BIOS. So what I'm gonna do is go into advanced mode here, and then we're gonna go into tool, and then we're gonna go into easy flash three utility. So click on that one, and it should automatically pick up your drives that are listed if it's physically installed, which ours currently is. So we're just gonna choose our cap file, which is this one here, and it's got the file name 2803, which is the one we want. So highlight that one, and it'll say, Important notice, please back up your BitLocker recovery key and suspend BitLocker encryption in the operating system before updating your BIOS. Now this is gonna be for Windows 11 users primarily. Obviously if you are using BitLocker on Windows 10, the same applies. So make sure you back up your recovery key because otherwise when you flash your BIOS, obviously things can go wrong and you may not be able to access your system, um, which is part of the whole TPM secure boot, blah, 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 et cetera. So um, probably an idea before you actually do this, if you are using BitLocker, et cetera, disable it before you do this. That is my advice, uh, or don't use it at all. So anyway, we're gonna just click on yes. And it says, do you want to read the file? Yes, we do want it to read it. P click on yes, and there, it'll say, do you really want to update the BIOS? Yes, we do. And it's giving you the BIOS version and the time and date, etc. So then all we need to do when you're ready, just click on yes. Clearly at this point, if you're not entirely sure or you're uncomfortable with the whole BitLocker thing, and you're not sure about your TPM, Stop right now, get over to our Discord or let me know in the comment section uh, if you've got any problems or concerns. I'd rather you did that now than get yourself into a mess and ruin your system. So that is my kind of uh, disclaimer and all that stuff. If you're not sure, reach out, get some help. That's the best thing to do. But if you are completely sure, now's the time where you can click on yes and it will start flashing the bar. So at the bottom of the screen it says processing. So it's going to go through a series of things where it's going to read the actual BIOS file from the USB drive. It's then going to transfer it to your BIOS. It's then going to erase program, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, we'll let it get on and do that, and we'll come back when it's done. Okay, so this is now uh, squeaky bum time. Is it actually going to reboot? Has the BIOS flash taken? We'll soon find out. Hopefully, it should boot straight back up into the BIOS now. We'll see how it goes. It's currently going through the uh, LED cycle with the key flash, well not the key flash, the uh, diagnostic LEDs. So hopefully we should get a display very shortly. And there we go, BIOS is updating the LED firmware. Uh, do not shut down or reset the system to prevent system boot up failure. Okay, I won't do those things. Yeah, you'll probably find actually whilst you're doing this, the USB ports will be kind of disabled. So if you've got a USB keyboard and mouse, you shouldn't be able to actually do anything with them anyway. So yeah, don't worry too much. So it's going through the boot cycle again. I've got a green LED on the board, which is uh, a good sign. There we go, we've got our screen back up, which is awesome. And uh, I'm not sure it's gonna go into the BIOS first of all, whether or not it'll go back into Windows. It may actually do another reflash, or another reboot rather. It does change pretty much every time you do a BIOS. It's not always the same thing. Anyway, here we go, this is awesome. So Asus Prime B550 Plus ACPI BIOS revision 2803. So it has taken, it's showing our processor, memory, etc. Although it's showing the memory speed as being incorrect, so we're gonna to wanna to change that. Uh, it says there, press enter to recover the BIOS setting. Press F1 to set up. So let's go ahead and do that. We didn't wanna recover the previous settings. We're going to set them all fresh. So there we go, there is uh, our BIOS all working. So let's go in now, we'll turn on DOCP, which is XMP. You can, if you want to, go into Q fan control, all that kind of stuff. We've now got option for resize bar, which we didn't have previously, so we can flick that on. And also, I'm gonna go into advanced mode and make sure that everything is okay there. Yep, that looks good. Um, in advance, we've got trusted computing is now on, and that will be enabled by default because it's now supporting Windows 11. Make sure our boot option's right. So, yep, our boot option one, is our boot drive. I'm gonna disable two just in case. But yep, yeah, seems absolutely fine. No doubt there's gonna be lots of other things we can tweak on there. Actually, something which I might wanna change is if there is any BIOS, or BIOS rather. So there is an option, uh, performance BIOS, or BIOS even. Look how I'm pronouncing that. So at the moment, it's set to auto. Uh, I generally like to send that to none. 
That looks fine. So we can come out there and click on exit and we'll save changes and reset. It's going to tell you exactly what it's going to do. So that's absolutely fine. So click OK. And in theory, we should now load back into Windows. Fingers crossed. I have great confidence it should work. It definitely should work. Possibly might work. It may actually try to retrain the RAM because we've changed the XMP settings. So if it doesn't boot up first time, then uh, don't be too concerned. Yeah, there we go, it's trained the RAM, so it's rebooting again. We've got our Windows loading uh, circle, spinning circle of doom. And there we go, back into Windows. So I'm gonna give this a few seconds and uh, let all the services background stuff load up. And then I'm gonna run another Cinebench run and see how we do, see if we've improved that, see if we've get a few more points. Okay, so there we go, there is the, uh, the first Cinebench run and there's a fly in the room. Uh, we have improved the score very slightly. So we're now at 18.422, I think that says. So we've increased probably about 100 points, which potentially could be a run-to-run -run variance, but it certainly is an improvement. It hasn't gone backwards, which is always good. Now, obviously, for some people, if you're using this motherboard and you've maybe got a slightly newer graphics card that relies quite heavily on resizable bar, uh, Intel, I'm looking at you if the Intel cards are right by the time you're watching this video. And also if you're using things like the uh, 6500 XT, then certainly that is going to take advantage of resizable bar. Lots of graphics cards do. There is a very slight uh, performance improvement to be had with resizable bar, so it's nice the fact we've got it. We've got a new BIOS anyway, so any other sort of weird bugs, especially things like the Windows 11 stuttering every now and then, uh, should be fixed. Anyway, I think that's going to wrap this one up. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, smash the like button. If you want to see more content like this on a daily basis, hit the subscribe button and the chime notification, and you'll see videos is pretty much every single day of the year. But if you've got any comments or questions regarding this, please feel free to put them in the comment section below. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully, we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.